Whether you yourself or someone you care about in your organization is being discriminated against, it must be addressed. But how do you do that in a way such that it enables and inspires change? Well, I'm sharing my candid perspective right now. the honor and pleasure of working with the Fortune 500 all over the world to inspire growth through change. This work includes enabling cultural journeys, as more and more businesses and organizations are embracing the importance of establishing and sustaining a highly engaged and diverse workforce, where everyone feels safe, comfortable, and empowered to bring their fullest expression into the workplace. Sometimes discrimination, both overt and covert, can stand in the way of that, and it must be addressed. If you or someone you care about in the workforce is experiencing discrimination, I wanna share my candid perspective to support you. By the end of this video, you'll have a renewed sense of the importance of accountability. You'll have a refreshed awareness of the power of impacting just one individual and an understanding of who might be another great resource for you in this moment. Let me start by something that I feel is most critical when we think about eliminating discrimination. And that is the importance of accountability. I firmly believe that sustained change cannot happen without accountability. This is something that I've come to know thanks to my work with the Fortune 500. And that goes for any change, certainly the ones around eliminating discrimination in the workplace. We must hold one another and ourselves accountable to eliminate discrimination, to nurture that type of inclusive environment where everyone feels safe and comfortable to express their fullest expression. Now, let me just underline really, really what this looks like and what this means. Accountability is where the buck stops. And when we hold ourselves accountable, it means the buck stops with us. So we're asking ourselves, what can I be doing to move the needle? What can I be doing to help eliminate discrimination? To voice it when I see it, to ensure that I'm not the one discriminating against someone else. And this might look like signing up for unconscious bias training, to understand where you might be actually sharing a bit of microaggression in the organization, not realizing it. For marginalized populations, populations where I exist as a queer, black, female engineer and CEO founder, that looks like speaking up and speaking out. And I will say that accountability lies not only in those who are a part of marginalized populations, but perhaps more importantly, those who are not, those who carry both power and privilege in the workforce. It's up to you to hold yourself accountable, to do that speaking up, to do that speaking out. Honestly, it can be a lot more powerful when it comes from someone who holds privilege, who is not a part of a marginalized population. Strive to hold yourself accountable to creating and nurturing that type of culture that you want to thrive, where everyone feels comfortable being their best and doing their best. The second bit of perspective that I wanna share is the power of impacting the one. Impact the one. So what do I mean by that? If you're currently experiencing some level of discrimination or someone that you care about is, perhaps it's one individual that's actually doing that wrong, that's doing the discriminating. When you can address and have an impact on that one individual, you can create a ripple effect. It's like you've dropped a pebble in a pond by impacting that one individual. And then their learning, their understanding can then get replicated throughout the organization because they're gonna strive, hopefully, to do better. And so what does that look like when you have an individual that you wanna impact, that your feeling is expressing discrimination, how do you approach or how do you challenge that individual? I think one of the best ways to do this is speak from your point of view of how it has impacted you or how it's impacted what you can see of another individual. Focus on the act, on the words, on the behavior, and not the individual. That's usually the best way for a person to embrace that wrong. Keep it on yourself. This is the impact that these words, these actions had on me. That's the best way to kind of lean into that conversation and opening the discussion and hopefully allowing that individual's mind to understand how their actions, how their words played out, how their intent might've got misconstrued and the impact that resulted from that. So focus your energy and attention on the act, on the words, not condemning the individual as best as you can. 
By the way, if you're digging this, if you're getting value, please subscribe, like, click the things. I do videos like this all the time. I wanna make sure that you're getting great value as it relates to going through big change. The third bit of perspective is something that you've probably heard a lot about, especially in these recent years, and that is leaning into uncomfortable conversations. Actually approaching that individual that might have done you harm or, you know, that made that discrimination happen. Actually taking part in those conversations. These can go so far in nurturing and building authentic connection. You know, when we're in these conversations of discomfort, that emotional energy is flowing, right? That anxiety, that fear, sometimes anger, frustration, irritation. But when that energy is there, you're bringing your full authentic self. You're sharing something that you care about because it's been inflamed with these emotions. And so when you can seek to understand another individual and clearly express yourself, the impact that a wrongdoing might have had on you, it's gonna nurture that authentic connection. We cannot progress. We cannot move forward as we think about eliminating discrimination, breaking down these systems of oppression, if we're not having the conversation. You can't ignore it. I've seen one too many well-intentioned leaders who shy away from hearing about the harm, the wrongdoing, the violence, the discrimination, because it's just too difficult. It's too difficult to hear. But if you don't lean into those conversations, nothing will change. So I would invite you out of that mindset. Step into these uncomfortable conversations. Seek to understand another, notably those in marginalized populations. What can you be doing to show up better for them, to show up as an ally, and to improve your understanding of how the environment, how society, how these systems have impacted those around you. Lean into these very difficult conversations. The fourth bit of perspective, and this is related to who might be a good additional resource for you in this moment, is to leverage your trusted mentor network. When you're navigating through potential discrimination or you're seeing wrongdoing in the workplace, the best things that you can do is find your mentors, find individuals that you trust in the organization to voice what happened to voice the impact and perhaps get some coaching on how to engage that individual or others in the organization. They can also provide just emotional and kind of spiritual mental support as you're going through this. So find those that you trust throughout the organization to share the wrongdoing. That individual, especially if they have stepped into their accountability and helping to eliminate discrimination and nurture that type of inclusive environment can help you make that ripple effect stronger, right? So not only will you have the opportunity of engaging with perhaps one individual that created that wrongdoing or that discriminated against you, that mentor can help as well. And maybe even higher levels in the organization. It can always just start with a one and then those ripple effects will grow. But make sure as you're reaching out, it's someone that you trust as you're sharing the difficulty that you're experiencing. So if you got value from this, if you're digging it, if I've piqued your curiosity, I've got something else for you. As we think about those really difficult emotions like fear, like frustration that we experience in the workplace, notably when we're trying to initiate change in our cultures and our business environments. I wanna gift you a free chapter of my book, Change Enthusiasm, How to Harness the Power of Emotion for Leadership and success. Notably, I want to share with you the introductory chapter of this mindset. This is all about leveraging the power of that difficult emotion, inviting you into a great moment of opportunity. Opportunity to nurture authentic connection, opportunity to take accountability to support and nurture that inclusive environment, and stepping into that seat of choice, choosing how you move forward. This chapter is going to give you all the details, all the nuts and bolts on how to embody this growth mindset. I want to make sure you have the research, the data, and the insights to successfully grow through even your greatest change challenges. I'm Cassandra Worthy, and until we meet again, keep growing and keep rocking.